Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Stan Cohn. Stan is the Upland Game Bird Supervisor at Game and Fish. We've already covered, of course, the grouse and partridge seasons last week or a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we're going to focus now strictly on pheasants. Big weekend coming up, Stan. Uh, you got pretty good news. Yeah, actually, Tom, the, the news is quite good. Uh, we just finished up our roadside counts, and uh, this is where we take a look at production for pheasants and actually all our upland game birds. But pheasant numbers did kind of shine this year again, and we were hoping they would. The indications were there that, that they should, but you just never know what that production period in May and June is going to be like. But it looks like for most areas of the state, the numbers are going to look pretty good. Sportsmen should have a pretty decent season this year and uh, you know we're kind of looking forward to a exciting uh, pheasant opener. Well it seems like things went down for a while and now we're back on the upswing again. You mentioned your roadside counts now is that where you get most of your data to make these predictions? Yeah it is. Uh, we have about a hundred roadside counts spread throughout the state and actually they're the same routes that our cooperators run in the spring when they're doing the pheasant crow count. And so uh, they go out and take a look from about the middle of August until the 1st of September in regards to uh, the number of hens that they see and the number of hens with broods. And of course, we count the number of chicks just to see what production actually is. Yep. And uh, we do it late enough in the year that we have a pretty good feeling that what we see out there now is actually recruited birds that will be coming into the population in the fall. And uh, this year in most areas of the state, we saw much better numbers than the, what we saw for total broods. We saw better numbers than what we counted for total number of birds that we observed. And then our average uh, brood size was up. And so you put all those parameters together and that kind of gives you an indication of what we might be looking for for a fall uh, hunting season and, and, and things look pretty decent. Stan, let's split the state up into four regions for the purpose of this preview. Go over them one by one. Let's start with the Northeast. Sure. Uh, the Northeast, Tom, not traditionally our best pheasant area. It kind of gets up in the northern part of the state where our pheasant numbers, uh, just because of the habitat and then the harsh winter conditions in most areas are a little tough. So, uh, but we did see uh, just a, a slight decrease in the number of birds that we saw up there. The season up there probably be more comparable to what it was last year with not too much changes. Usually the better hunting in the northeast part of the district is down in the southern area mm -hmm. uh, that kind of borders the interstate. And so, uh, you know, pheasant hunters, we're going to see okay numbers up in that area, and if they know where the pheasant habitat is, they'll get into birds. Uh, the southeast part of the state now used to be uh, kind of an overlooked area. It was very good for a while, sort of had a little downturn. How are we now? Uh, actually, the southeast was kind of a surprise to us this year. Uh, their crow count numbers were up, and so we thought, well, if, if the weather holds up, we should see better production down there, and we did. And so uh, pheasant hunters down in that area are probably going to see better pheasant numbers than they've seen in the last few years. Uh, you're right, things have changed down in that area. It used to be one of the really strong pheasant holds of the state. And then, uh, of course, with commodity prices, changes in the landscape down there, our pheasant numbers kind of readjusted and at, at a lower level, and they weren't quite where we would have liked to have seen them the last, uh, you know, five, six years. But now this year, uh, probably because of uh, higher adult population down there coupled with nice winter and uh, a situation where the weather was pretty good during the spring and fall season or uh, late summer we're going to see a uh, little better pheasant numbers down there and so I think those folks that hunt that southeast that are probably usually seeing lower numbers uh, a little more concentrated in areas of what good habitat there is are probably going to see a few more birds down that neck of the woods. All right northwest. Northwest, a kind of somewhat of a disappointment. The crow count uh, numbers up in that area look pretty good, and so we had pretty high expectations for that Northwest too. But for whatever reason, when we did our brood surveys up in that area, we saw numbers that were lower than what we'd seen in, in 2014. Uh, the brood numbers are still above long-term average, and so there's going to be some decent pheasant hunting up there, but the, the numbers may not be quite as strong as what folks experienced last year, and so they may have to spend a little more time looking spend a little more time out in the field and certainly working those areas that look like good pheasant habitat. But uh, they'll find some birds, but maybe not quite as many as we had hoped that one would run across given uh, what they were seeing for uh, adult numbers and the uh, spring weather. All right, Southwest. Southwest, 
The strong point, yeah. <laughs> there's no doubt about it. Uh, we saw even in the wintertime when we were doing our winter surveys and doing some age ratio stuff down there, a lot of birds. And the spring, very strong crowing count. Weather was very nice down in that area this winter, so we carried a lot of adult birds through. And, uh, you know, we did get some isolated uh, thunderstorms rolling through that area that probably caused uh, some problems in localized areas with hens nesting for part of the spring, but uh, I suspect many of those hens went back and re-nested. And so all in all, our numbers look, you know, up about 25, 30% down there. So there's certainly a real nice population of pheasants, probably in some areas, even approaching what we were seeing in the late 2000s when CRP acres were, wow. were really up there. So production looks good, recruitment looks good. Not only should folks run into a fair number of birds, but there should be a lot of young birds in that population, which always gives the appearance of, of many roosters out on the landscape. <laughs> Any trouble areas in the pheasant population? You know, there really isn't. Uh, uh, in terms of population numbers, what we are seeing, though, is some, uh, some adjustment of cover on the landscape. Uh, you know, when we were at our all-time pheasant highs, comparable to the 1940s, occurred in the mid-2000s, and we were looking like 3.3 million acres of CRP. I believe we're down to about half that, about 1.7 million acres. And where those acres have been removed, if it happens to be in areas that produce good pheasants in the past, there will be lower numbers. And of course, you know, we're seeing that now, even though weather kind of helped us out this year of keeping numbers high. Uh, there is uh, kind of a black cloud, so to speak, on the horizon that as good nesting and brooding habitat on the landscape gets removed, uh, we're going to continue to see pheasant numbers, you know, keep going down, 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 because they, they do respond to good nesting cover, and as fewer acres of that are on the landscape, fewer number of birds are going to be produced. Any regulation changes that hunters need to know about? No, Tom, I think uh, all in all, uh, there will be no changes. The season is going to open October 10th and then it'll run through the first weekend in uh, January. Uh, no regulation changes. Everything will be the same as last year. Uh, they still need probably to consult their uh, small game hunting guide just to make sure where they're hunting. Uh, that nothing has changed in their localized area, but all in all, everything's going to be the same. All right. Stan, as long as I've got you here, there is another bird season that's going to open the same day as pheasant season, uh, wild turkeys. We yep. may as well talk about yep. that. Bit, yep, huh? you're absolutely right. Well, our wild turkey season will open on the October 10th also. Uh, this is uh, will be our either sex season. Uh, the the uh, application period has already ended, so I'm sure the drawing will be held quite shortly here and folks will find out whether they got drawn or not. And then any extra tags that'll be available will be uh, across the counter on a first come, first serve basis. As we look at our turkey population, uh, Tom, a little different than what we're seeing for pheasants. Uh, turkeys are uh, probably have stabilized in the state and probably stabilized at a lower level than we would like to see them. Uh, we had better turkey population five, six years ago and the numbers because of some poor production kind of have dropped off and so we've been trying to reduce licenses in order to kind of stabilize those numbers and eventually turn it around so we can build our turkey population up a little bit. So what has happened this year, we've actually reduced the number of licenses about 150 from what we had in 2014. I think this year we'll be issuing like uh, uh, 3,655 licenses compared to 3,805 in 2014. Uh, most of the changes will be coming out of five districts, uh, hunting districts, uh, four across the north central part of the state that we lowered because numbers just weren't quite as strong as we thought they would be. And then unit 37 down the southeast, we uh, adjusted those numbers uh, lower. Then there's two uh, districts where we'll be uh, shutting the season down again, unit 21 in the southwest. and. Uh, Unit 53 up in the northwest, uh, those units have been closed for several years. They will remain closed this year just because of lower uh, turkey populations. We don't feel like there's quite the number there yet that we're ready to open those units. And all the remaining units, there'll be no change in the number of uh, licenses available. So as you look at our turkey season this year, uh, sportsmen are going to find birds probably where they always find them, like everything else. It's going to take a little time to get out and, and uh, visit with landowners, find the areas where they've seen turkeys in the past, or check the old spots. But uh, if they know where turkeys are, there's going to be birds in that area, even though it may take a little more effort for them to track them down. All right, some great information. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome, Tom. Pheasant and wild turkey seasons in North Dakota open on Saturday, October 10th 
and close January 3rd. Make sure you read the proclamation thoroughly and understand the rules and regulations. The daily limit for rooster pheasants is three. The possession limit is 12. You are allowed one wild turkey of either sex during the fall season. The shooting hours for both seasons are a half hour before sunrise to sunset. For Stan Cohn and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.